Here's what the president said today about the Republican budget plan proposed by multimillionaire Congressman Paul Ryan from Wisconsin. Take a look. It is a Trojan horse. Disguised as deficit reduction plans, it is really an attempt to impose a radical vision on our country. It is thinly veiled social Dar Darwinism. Question is, where does this radical vision come from? Whose ideology is it that's motivating people like Paul Ryan and the rest of the Republican Party to push for proposals that will lead to enormous pain and suffering for millions of Americans just so the top 1% can get a $3 trillion tax cut? This ideology comes from this woman, Ayn Rand. From cutting off assistance for poor people, to dismantling Medicare and Social Security, to idolizing the super rich. All of it is textbook Ayn Rand. And all of it is contained in the Paul Ryan budget. Take a look at how CBS's Mike Wallace defined Ayn Rand's philosophy in an interview with her way back in 1959. You are out to destroy almost every edifice in the contemporary American way of life, our Judeo-Christian religion, our modified government-regulated capitalism, our rule by the majority will. Other reviews have said that you scorn churches and the concept of God. Are these accurate criticisms? Uh, yes. Christ, every important moral leader in man's history, has taught us that we should love one another. Why, then, is this kind of love, in your mind, immoral? It is immoral if it is a love placed above oneself. And then if a man is weak or a woman is weak, then she is beyond, he is beyond love? He certainly does not deserve it. He certainly is beyond. There are very few of us then in this world, by your standards, who are worthy of love. Uh, unfortunately, yes, very few. She agrees that she's out to destroy the values of compassion associated with religion. She's out to destroy regulated capitalism. She's out to destroy rule by majority democracy. She's out to destroy every moral leader in human history who taught the very simple concept that we should love one another. You would think that with these beliefs, Ayn Rand would be completely radioactive to most politicians, that her political philosophy would be avoided like the plague. But here's what Congressman Paul Ryan, the guy who submitted that wackadoodle budget, this is what he said about her. And Ayn Rand, more than anyone else, did a fantastic job of explaining the morality of capitalism, the morality of individualism. And so if Ayn Rand were here today, I think she would do a great job in showing us just how wrong what government is doing is. Uh, because it's that kind of thinking, that kind of writing that is sorely needed right now. It's that kind of thinking that's sorely needed right now. Right. So says Paul Ryan, the author of this radical Republican budget that targets the poor to give huge tax breaks to the rich. So has the entire Republican Party been hijacked by this bizarre Ayn Rand ideology? And if so, how? And what are the consequences of it? Joining me now is Gary Weiss, a journalist and author of numerous books, including his latest, Ayn Rand Nation, The Hidden Struggle for America's Soul. Gary, welcome. Hi there, Tom. Thanks for joining us from our uh, studios there in, is that New York City? Uh, <clears throat> where did Ayn Rand derive her philosophy from? Well, she basically derived it from communism. I mean, she fled um, Stalinist Russia in the early 1920s. And she, her entire philosophy is basically derived from communism in the, in, the, in the sense that it's sort of the polar opposite of communism. It was all in reaction to the Stalinist excesses. And she superimposed that reaction on American democracy. That, that's, that's the sum total of it. But didn't she also confuse democracy and capitalism? Uh, you know, capitalism is an economic system. Democracy is a political system. Whereas in the old Soviet Union, communism was both. Uh, do you think that distinction was lost on Ayn Rand? Yeah, I think many distinctions were lost on Ayn Rand. I think Ayn Rand simply did not understand the American people. You know, in a sense, she sort of had a, had a connection uh, with the way Americans thought, but I think in a, in, a, in a deeper sense, if you look at her philosophy, she simply did not understand the American people. She didn't understand American values. And what you see her in, in all of her books, you see her repudiating American values one after another, and ju the Judeo-Christian values in particular. So what would America look like if Ayn Rand was running the show, or if one of her accolades or devotees like, like Paul Ryan was running the show? 
Well, what you'd see, you, you, you would see basically a dismantlement of government. You'd see every aspect of government which benefits people would just go away. All that you'd have left would be the army, you'd have a police force, and you'd have the courts. And that was basically it. That was her vision of America, uh, uh, where basically the, the United States would be run by corporations. And since they'd have no barriers to merge, to merger, or an, there'd be no antitrust barriers, you would have America would be ruled by the biggest companies. And these, these were the people that Ayn Rand idolized. And so th th this, this idolization of the rich, I, you know, I find that extraordinary uh, in that, you know, she fled Stalinist Russia. She saw, uh, she saw, I mean, her father lost his pharmacy and all that. But then she, you know, she went to college in, in I believe it was in Kiev. Uh, she saw the abuse of power by a small number of people. Uh, they didn't represent themselves as billionaires, but she saw the, the abuse of concentrated power. How could she not see that concentrated wealth in the United States was, you know, functionally the same thing as that kind of concentrated power that, that she had le fled? Because she, she made a distinction between concentrated power in the hands of corporations. That was okay with her. Concentrated power in the hands of government, she was opposed to. She did not understand that power corrupts absolutely, whether it's power in the hands of government or power in the hands of corporations. And one of the things I tried to do in my book, as I tried in researching my book, is I tried to find out why is it that people embrace Ayn Rand even though it's contrary to their own interests. You know, Ayn Rand, you know, she taught the, you know, so the, the script, her scripture was selfishness. So why is it that people who, you know, it's not in their self-interest to embrace Ayn Rand, why did they embrace Ayn Rand? And mm -hmm. I think this is, I think, the key point. You know, why do people embrace Ayn Rand? Why do people like Paul Ryan? And I think there's a lot of reasons for it, and this is what I get into in the book. So why do they? Well, they, they embrace Ayn Rand because Ayn Rand is more than just a narrow political philosophy. It's also sort of a self-help uh, philosophy, you know. She was kind of a self-help guru, and this is something that's lost in the, in the translation in a way. You know, people forget that the reason why Ayn Rand is so popular has a lot to do with what she taught in terms of self-esteem. I mean, kind of good stuff in a way, you know. You have to, you know, you have to love yourself. I mean, all that sort of, sort of new age stuff. A lot of it Ayn Rand, you know, sort of taught, and, and people don't talk about it, but this is sort of like if you get into the, into the weeds of, of objectivism, that's kind of what you find there. You find a self Health philosophy, and in a way, it's kind of a—it's almost like a cult to a certain extent because you've got a psychological element in addition to a political element, and you've got to understand that if you're going to understand objectivism, you know her philosophy, and you've got to understand objectivism if you have—if you want to understand why the country is moving in this direction that it—that it is into this radical right direction, you've got to get to the to the core, which I would suggest is is, is Ayn Rand and her and her objectivism. How do you think that that uh, Jefferson or Madison or Franklin or Washington? Washington would respond to Ayn Rand? I think they would they would detest Ayn Rand because the founders of this country, they taught, they, they believed in altruism. They served the nation. You know, in, in my book I describe, you know, a conversation I had with Yaron Brook, who's, who's the head of the uh, uh, of the Ayn Rand Institute, he's from Israel, and, and you know, he, he was telling me, and I have it in the book, how he really didn't like the aspect of Israeli society, she, he's from Israel, which involved sacrifice for the nation. Well, this is what the, the, the founders were all about, sacrificing for the nation. They sacrificed their fortunes and their lives for the nation. Now, if they were practicing you know, the philosophy of Ayn Rand, they'd have gone with the British. Mm -hmm. They would and not have gone with, with the revolution. Yeah, I, in fact, I've, I've talked with Iran many times, uh, debated him many times, and he's just right out front that uh, objectivists don't believe in democracy, small-d democracy, for example. Um, tell me about William, William Edward Hickman and, and his influence on Ayn Rand. Well, I, I, I don't think it's so much an influence on Ayn Rand. I mean, I think Ayn Rand drew her, 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 you know, her, her philosophy from any number of of, of, uh, of places, you know, she picked a little bit here, she picked a little bit here. She didn't like to ever, she did not really acknowledge where she got her belief system from to any extent. You know, she, she almost made it seem, well, you know, I got it all, uh, you know, uh, by myself. And I don't think it really matters to a great extent where she got her philosophy. I mean, a lot of people say, you know, her from the Austrian uh, school of economics or whatever. I think the important thing is you don't have to, to to, to, to really plow that deeply. The important thing is that Ayn Rand is the only philosopher of the right who is immensely popular among vast numbers of people. Her books sell in the hundreds and hundreds of thousands. You can't say that about anybody else on the right, or the left for that matter.
But you have uh, billionaires who are giving money to colleges and requiring, you know, one of the strings that goes along with that money, and I believe it's over 120 schools now, is that they have to teach Ayn Rand. They have to give Ayn Rand Absolutely. out to their students. You have Paul Ryan, who, who requires all his staff members to read Ayn Rand. I mean, with this uh, giant and wealthy right-wing machine pushing Ayn Rand, how could you not expect to see some sort of a response, uh, you know, a lot of people reading your books and things? Well, I think there's no question there's this big machine, there's this big organization which is pushing, very well-funded organization, which is pushing Ayn Rand's philosophy. But I think that in order to understand Rand, you've got to realize that it's not just that. If that's all there was to it, she wouldn't be as powerful as she is. The reason she's powerful is because people, young kids, you know, they discover Rand and they get really into it. You know, it's like I was saying, talking about earlier about her, her self-help philosophy, mm. you know, the way she appealed to the psychology of people. So it's not just the right-wing money, it's not just the astroturfing. She had a genuine hold on, uh, on, on a lot of people, on thousands of people, voluntarily buying her books, absorbing the good, the, sort of the semi-good, as well as the not-so-good stuff, you know, yeah. the psychology, as well as the politics. The psychology sort of is a doorway to the real right-wing politics. Remarkable. Gary Weiss, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it, Tom. Ayn Rand's philosophy is meant to benefit the psychopaths among us. In theory, it's seductive and enjoyable to read. In practice, though, her ideas lead to people dying. Let's leave Ayn Rand in the textbooks, not in the halls of government.